Hello everybody, my name's Mark from High Rise Digital and welcome back to the High Rise YouTube channel where we talk about WordPress, websites and everything in between. And in today's video we are looking at the new release of WordPress version 6 which actually came out yesterday evening here in the UK, uh, probably yesterday afternoon over in the, the US. And WordPress 6 has got lots of new features and I am going to talk you through some of the things that piqued my interest when I was looking through what those features were, what they did, etc. So that's what we're going to do in today's video. If you are uh, interested in WordPress, then this channel is a good one for you. So why don't you consider hitting the subscribe button below? And if you like this video, please click the like button. And I would love to know what is your favorite part of WordPress version 6, add that in the comments below please. But let's get into the video. Now every release of WordPress gets uh, written up what's called a field guide and here is the WordPress 6 field guide and you can find that on the make.wordpress.org core blog which is a very useful one if you're not uh, a regular visitor of that blog if you want to keep up to date with the development in WordPress you can subscribe to the blog so you get emails when new posts get written etc and it is certainly worth doing that if you're interested in keeping up to date. This particular post um, is all about WordPress version 6 and the idea of the field guide is it talks you through some of the bigger changes, features, additions, so that you can get to grips with them, particularly if they have an impact on any work that you have done. You may obviously want to, to look at those. So let's have a quick look down this list. As you can see, I've got some tabs open at the top here, which are looking at my favorite features, but we'll have a quick look at everything. So here's got some accessibility improvements that throughout WordPress. That's always got to be a good thing. Getting WordPress more accessible to everybody has got to be a good. Uh, and obviously, they've done some work with that. I'm not going to go into too much detail about what those are. Lots of block editor stuff, which is exciting. Um, lots of improvements to the block editor, and many of which we're going to have a look at in a second. And you can see there's some uh, bundled in here. But some of the big ones uh, which are on here. So let's have a look at this one first of all, which is block locking settings in WordPress version 6. Now, this is quite exciting in that you can now lock different blocks into different positions on a page. And I believe you can lock them in terms of who can move them, who can change them, etc. So there's some code here about how you would um, change the block locking. So we've got um, a filter called block editor settings all. And here, there's some examples here of whether the, if the current user has a specific capability, in this case, delete others' posts, um, they can not or, or block blocks, depending on that. You can lock, uh, enable the lock block feature for specific users. So here's uh, setting one for a specific user with a specific email address. Or you can do it by a context in terms of posts. So here we can say if it's a page or a post, you can't um, lock a block, which is interesting. Um, so that's good. Um, and then it's also, it says there's a, there's a link here about having it being controlled by a modal. So hopefully this is going to show us how that actually happens. Or maybe not. Yes, it is. Is it going to show us with some, uh, there's a little video here. So you can see that you can lock the block and there's some information there about how to do that. So that looks interesting. Um, I'm sure that this could be very useful for client sites. Um, I haven't looked into it in detail yet, but certainly something that I'd like to to look into in more detail as the uh, as the weeks unfold on the R and D list, which I haven't yet got round to. But block locking could be super useful, particularly if that's your use case. So let's go back to the field guide. Um, updates to the WordPress block create block templating system. Not too sure what that is. I've not had a look at it. Support for handling resolution errors for editor data module. Um, errors is, I always found really difficult in the block editor, getting, finding out where the errors are. Maybe that's going to help there. I'm not just sure. Uh, this one's interesting. Block markup for uh, images and quotes and lists and group blocks. So we just have a look at this one. So they're actually changing the markup. So uh, traditionally, blocks, some blocks had a wrapper div, which you can see here which has got the block class, so in this instance, WP block image, and then it's got the alignment class, and then it went into the figure, and what they've done with WordPress 6 is they've removed this outer element, and they've put these classes onto the figure element, which then wraps the image. 
that's just obviously an example with the image. Um, it does say this change is only effective for themes with a theme.json file. Uh, so if you don't have a theme.json file, file, you shouldn't see any difference here. Obviously, if you have, you might notice some issues with image alignment, so that's interesting to look at. Um, quotes and lists have got some changes with box sizing and border box, says they come with a default value, um, and so on. So always, always interesting to look at when markup changes. I hate it when they change markup, but I know sometimes it's inevitable you have to do that. Um, but that's something to look out for if you're updating sites from WordPress uh, 5.93, was it, the last version, uh, to WordPress version 6, because that might uh, have an effect on some of your styling for your sites. So that's that uh, change. Um, separator block updated to use block support color settings. Not sure what that is. We do use a separator block on some sites, actually. Uh, we've styled it to be um, specific to the site, which is interesting. Um, Changes to do pass request if you're a plugin developer using that, perhaps that's interesting. I, I don't know anything about that. And caching improvements, so it looks like some improvements to the caching functions. So, certainly worth doing that if you're using WP cache functions in WordPress. Um, <clears throat> so, we've looked at the block, lot, block locking ones. Um, modifying content images, um, that could be interesting. Um, uh, we'll come to that in a second. But the other one that I found up here was the object type specific registration hooks in WordPress. So if you have a plugin, for example, that has added a post type and you want to change some of the arguments that were registered when that post type is registered, a simple example would, could be that the, the post type has been registered um, to be non-hierarchical like posts, but you want it to be hierarchical. You can use the register post type args filter, which is this one here, to do that. But when you do that, you must check for the post type, so you're only modifying the post type that you want to modify. Well, what's happened now is they've got some new what they call like dynamic filters. So we've got register register post type post type args, where post type here is replaced with the name of the post type. So if you only wanted to do this for pages, for example, it would be register page post type args, and you could just focus on that one. And the same thing when you're using taxonomies as well, which is quite interesting. Um, specific as well, there's some more actions that have got the same, so register post type and then the name of the post type, so you can focus on that specific post type, which is good. Um, here's the filters to modify content images. So uh, WordPress has introduced <clears throat> a new filter called WP Content Image Tag, um, which basically allows you to adjust images within the content. Um, to, to solve those sorts of problems. And there's an example here um, of, for example, it says a new filter used to add a border style attribute to every image filter. I don't quite know why you want to do that, but it tells you, you know, it allows you to do that. So every image that's in the content of the post, and that I think is regardless of what block it's in. So if it's in an image block, a gallery block, a media or a text block, or potentially a custom block that someone's written, you can change or modify that image using this particular uh, filter which I thought might be useful. Um, the the one that I was thinking of was, it would appear that PageSpeed Insights doesn't want lazy loading on the first image on a page, or more specifically, if that image is in the viewport. So therefore, you could potentially use this to grab the first image and remove the lazy loading attribute of that image. Um, so that's something to look at that I thought might be useful for it. Uh, this one, I generally thought this could be very helpful for our clients. Page um, creation patterns in WordPress 6. So the idea here is that when you create a new page in WordPress, why not show the user the different patterns that are available to use in a page? So remember, WordPress block editor, we can register patterns, which is basically a pattern of pre-made blocks that have been put together with all the settings in, and the user can just drop that pattern on the page and then start maybe filling in the text in it. Page creation patterns allows the user to, to, to select a pattern first as they've added the new page, which I thought was really interesting. If I just click on this image in a new tab, you can see it a bit better. So it's choose a pattern. I'm guessing this pattern on the left is a pattern and these two on the right are patterns. Um, you can, presumably you just click on those and it drops that onto the page. I thought that would be really good for a lot of clients. 
you know, I want to create a landing page and you've got a pattern for a landing page. I want to create a services page. You've got a pattern for that and they can instantly choose it in this pop-up, which I thought was a really interesting concept. And it looks like um, you can register patterns really easily here as well in terms of adding them to that um, uh, to that mo to that modal there. So there's a little example here. It looks like it's something to do with this block types um, one here that pops in the modal. Um, or um, this, is, this is interesting as well. It was interesting about adding patterns. Where's the link for that? Adding patterns. Is it here? Yeah, new features for working with patterns. Oh, that was my next tab, actually. We'll come to that now. Um, so it looks like you're going to be able to register a block pattern by simply placing the, the in a patterns folder uh, in your theme rather than having to sort of register block pattern, etc. So there's an example here where you've got like a plugin style header at the top of your file. Um, so the title of the block pattern, what its slug is. Uh, so this is like a, a, a plugin or theme prefix and then the, the, the slug of the pattern. <clears throat> and then what, what categories that pattern should appear in. And then you just drop the, the code in, the, the pattern code for that that you'd probably copied from the block editor itself. And putting that in the patterns folder will then make that show up. I thought that was really interesting, a better way of doing it than having to sort of go through all the register block pattern functionality and stuff like that. So that was good. Um, so those were the, the things that stuck out to me in WordPress version 6 that was uh, going to be good. I'm sure there's so much more in there as well if you've digging in. Let me know what your favourite feature is going to be, what I've missed off that I think is that you think is awesome and I should know about or I should have read more about in the comments below. That would be great. If you've enjoyed listening to me talk about WordPress 6, then please consider clicking the like button if you haven't subscribed to the channel and you want more videos about WordPress and website development, then please subscribe now. And until then, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks very much.